What's up guys, Mike here back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the corner class in the summer preview. Now last year's quarterback class was historic. Um, just ridiculously talented group. And as always when, when a situation like that happens, we're getting the reverse of that this year. Think about a couple years ago, back in 2014, when we had that insanely talented wide receiver class. That was like OBJ, Mike Evans, Brandon Cooks, Kelvin Benjamin, Sammy Watkins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next year we had Amari Cooper and we had Kevin White. And then the year after that we had Laquan Treadwell and Corey Coleman. This is kind of what that's like this year. I mean, last year we had guys like Sidney Jones, Marshawn Lattimore, Gary on Connolly, um, Rasul Douglas, um, just all of these insanely talented corners, you know, top to bottom. And we had, God, like, it felt like, it, it honestly felt like 20 corners went in the first three rounds, which is just insane. This year, we're not looking at that, really. Um... We'll start with the guy at the top, and that's Minka Fitzpatrick, and I'm a little bit hesitant to even label him a corner because, well, technically, yes, he is a cornerback, but Alabama used him a lot of safety last year after Eddie Jackson got hurt, and he was a nickel in his freshman year and played a little bit in the sophomore year, and then obviously Eddie Jackson gets hurt, they move him to uh, free safety. So it's I'm almost hesitant to talk too much about him as a corner right now because of the fact that he could very easily just play safety because Alabama's got two more good corners behind him. And Al Nick Saban does not give two shits about a guy's, you know, draft stock. He wants to win another national championship, which is fine. And I'm not saying he shouldn't do that. But is it really worth the time to invest so much time talking about Minka Fitzpatrick as a cornerback? He probably won't play that at the college level. And who I don't know how he would be as a full time on the you know, you know full number one or number two corner being on the perimeter when I've only really seen him a corner as a nickel and I've seen a lot of him as a safety. Maybe he ends up being a safety at the next level, but I don't know, so I don't really want to touch on him too much. What I can say is Mika Fitzpatrick is really fucking good. He's a ball hawk. Man, he's actually a lot bigger than I thought too. When I started watching him, I kind of figured he would be about six feet. About 195. He's 6'2 and 215. He is a big dude to be playing corner. I think he's got a really good side to be playing safety as well. I think he's this may be sacrilege. He could be this year's Jalen Ramsey, where he could be an an all pro at either of those positions. Another really tall corner, Tavares McFadden, but man, McFadden does not use his size whatsoever. He led the the uh, NCAA in interceptions. He had eight last year. However, he had 18 tackles. 18. Jeez, that's not good. That is not good for any, you know, it almost seems like he's afraid of contact. And again, corners are notoriously not the greatest tacklers. Look at Deion Sanders. I don't remember any big Deion Sanders hits. No, because Deion was afraid of, of you know, Deion made a lot of business decisions. Tavares McFadden definitely does make a lot of business decisions as well. But... My point is, is he, he's another big guy. He's like 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 uh, a little bit under 200 pounds, I believe. Um, he is definitely a boomer bust type of player because he'll either get that interception or you can easily torch him. Like, Clemson had their way with him. And that's, that's very telling because if you have a more physical receiver, line him up on Tavares McFadden and your day is set. Um, he needs to get in the weight room. He needs to be able to actually body up some of these bigger defenders, not be a little bitch when it comes to, you know, get, sticking his nose in and getting physical. I think he's really good. I think his ball skills are elite in this class, but I just worry about the rest, you know, the rest of his game. Jair Alexander out of Louisville. Uh, this is basically a clone of Vernon Hargraves. Uh, a little bit undersized, about 5'10", 5'11", 185. Not afraid to come up and lay the wood on someone. Makes a ton of plays. Uh, reminds me exactly of Vernon Hargraves, who I was, one, very high on, and two, went 11th overall. So you know that if he's a, 
a clone of that, but Vernon Hargraves has not had a great start to his NFL career. Looks like this year, uh, according to reports out of Bucks training camp, that he is having a better, uh, that he, he's likely going to have a better season this year. <coughs> Excuse me. But if J.R. Alexander is like um, Vernon Hargraves, we're looking at someone who will probably go top 15 in the class. Adonis Alexander, we go back-to-back -back Alexanders, uh, out of Virginia Tech. Uh, holy shit, another big cornerback. This dude's like 6'4". Um, and he's got like a 42-inch vertical, which is insane. So if you just throw it anywhere near him, he's coming down with that interception. Um, and of course, he's, you know, when you're that big and you're playing cornerback, I kind of want you to be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit edgy. Oh man, this dude talks some major shit. And you know what? Trash talking can get you some major, you know, trash talking at cornerback is one of those things that needs to happen. If you're a quiet corner, I'm not sold on you, really. Come on, man. Every corner is brash and arrogant, even when they don't have any right to be. Um, anyways, back to Adonis Alexander. Um, made some really big plays. I think it was Virginia, where like he just engulfed the ball because one, Virginia's quarterback just sucks, and threw it up, and Alexander used his like 40-something inch vertical had a height advantage on the receiver and, was, and just like engulfed the ball and the receiver came down with it. Just a fantastic play. Um, so you're looking at someone who's tall, has great coverage skills, and has great ball skills. He'll probably go higher than he deserves to next year, but I think he's still a really good player. Next up in the Ohio State one-year wonder category is going to be Denzel Ward. I mean, we see this every year with, you know, with Ohio State. They have to replace Eli Apple. Well, we've got Marshawn Lattimore and we've got Gary and Connolly. Well, now those two guys are gone. Well, we've got Denzel Ward now. I uh, haven't really seen a ton of, of Denzel Ward uh, just because finding tape on him when you're looking at a nickel corner and then trying to project him to a outside guy is a little bit tough. But against Oklahoma, played very well. Um, against Clemson, did not play very well. Kind of a hot and cold guy. I guess it's also a mix of the talent level in those two schools. Um, all in all, I think he's it's, it's going to be a big year for him. Um, a lot of people are very high on him. I'm kind of buying into the hype a little bit right now. We'll actually wait and see when he hits the field for a regular game uh, as a starting corner. Till then, not really going to make any huge uh, projections or huge statements about him. Um, Anthony Averett out of Alabama, really big, you know, really, uh, tall guy. He's like 6'1", 6'2", uh, really slender guy, uh, but not afraid to get his, um, you know, you know, get in the pile and, and lay someone out. Very physical player, uh, sometimes to his detriment, first play of the game, uh, in the national championship, Wayne Gallman lights him the fuck up. Um, you know, he's only about 185, 180. Very, very small corner, uh, given how tall he is. He needs to put on a little bit more size, uh, especially at a school like Alabama. I mean, yeah, you're a five-star recruit, but, like, you, you know you're going to be sitting for three years at Alabama before they use you. Like, get in the weight room, kid. Um, probably going to be on the outside corner. Uh, the, well, actually, definitely going to be an outside corner this year. Uh, it's just whether or not it's with Minka Fitzpatrick or whether it's with Tony Brown. Um... Definitely going to be interesting to see him. Uh, the SEC not really known for any of these good quarterback prospects, so uh, possibly have some opportunities to pick some passes off because these SEC quarterbacks are wildly inaccurate. Um, one last guy let's look at. Uh, Iman Marshall out of USC. Um, a former five-star recruit. Uh, was going to be the next big thing next to... Um, uh, Dory Jackson. Obviously, we saw Dory Jackson go in the top twenty. I wasn't really sold on a Dory Jackson just because I felt that his um, coverage skills were very hit and miss. Iman Marshall is a very good cover corner, but nowhere near the athlete that a Dory Jackson is, which is fine. A Dory Jackson was a world level uh, track athlete. However, Iman Marshall, I think, is a little bit like slow and clunky. I would be very surprised if if he uh, was ever really. Um, Athletic enough to be on the outside, maybe a safe a move to safety could help him because I don't see him running anything faster than about a four six. 
and that can be a huge detriment, especially even playing in the Pac-12, because there's some really fast receivers out there, um, you know, on the West Coast, and USC's got to be a little bit worried, you know, instead of having a Dory Jackson out there covering them, they got to have a, a slower guy, but his technique is very solid, which is something that a Dory Jackson did not have. That's going to do it for today, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. If you've got your own takes on the cornerback class, I'd love to hear them. Leave them down below. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for today, guys. See you next time.